scope and objective of the standard. The objective of this statement is to prescribe accounting treatment for borrowing cost. It does not deal with the imputed cost of owner's equity or preference share cost. Equity share capital ko jo humme cost dena padta hai aur preference shareholder ko jo humme dividend dena padta hai wo dono financial cost ko ye standard lagta nahi hai. So ye standard sirf borrowings ke liye hai, owner's fund ke liye bilkul bhi nahi hai. Now what is the meaning of borrowing cost? Borrowing cost are interest and other cost incurred by an enterprise in connection with borrowings of fund. So it is interest and all the other cost. Now let us see it in detail. It includes interest and commitment charges on bank borrowings and other short term and long term borrowings, amortization of discount or premiums relating to the borrowings. Suppose we have issued debentures and discount and the discount amount is being written off in profit and loss account, then that written off wala jo hissa hoga, wo bhi borrowing cost mein gina jayega. Amortization of ancillary cost incurred in connection with the arrangement of the borrowing and finance charges in respect of asset acquired under finance lease or under other similar arrangements. Exchange difference arising from foreign currency borrowings to the extent they are regarded as an adjustment to the interest cost. Let us learn now the most important concept of this standard, qualifying asset. A qualifying asset is an asset that necessarily takes a substantial period of time to get ready for its intended use or sale. We can take as an example manufacturing plant, power generating facilities, patent, it is intangible asset but remember intangible assets are also covered under AS 16 if it is a qualifying asset, inventories if it requires substantial amount of time to get ready to be sold. Now what is the meaning of qualifying asset or a substantial period of time? Substantial period of time is not defined in AS but we can Presume that maybe 12 months can be taken as substantial period of time. Now how to recognize the borrowing cost? Borrowing costs that are directly attributable to the acquisition, construction or production of a qualifying asset should be capitalized as a part of the cost of that asset. And other borrowing cost should be recognized as an expense in the period in which they are incurred. Now what will be the amount of recognition as borrowing cost? If the fund is specifically borrowed for qualifying asset, capitalize the following. Actual borrowing cost incurred on that borrowing during the period less any income on temporary investment of those borrowings. Let us take a practical case regarding capitalization of borrowing cost. On 20th for 2010, GLC Limited obtained a loan from a bank for rupees 50 lakhs to be utilized as under construction of a shade 20 lakhs, purchase of machinery 15 lakhs, working capital 10 lakhs and advance for purchase of truck is 5 lakhs. So here we can see this total amounts to 50 lakhs only. In March 2011, construction of shed was completed and the machinery is installed. Delivery of truck was not received. Total interest charged by the bank for the year ending 31st March 2011 was Rs 9 lakhs. Show the treatment of interest under A16. Now, the most important thing which we should learn here, which is remember here, is that A16 is only applicable in case of and only talks about the qualifying asset. Qualifying asset. So it's very necessary for us to find out which of the assets is qualifying one. Construction of a shade can be taken as qualifying asset. It's a purchase of machinery. We directly machine ko purchase kar liya hai. So this is not qualifying asset. Even working capital cannot be taken as qualifying asset. And advance for purchase of truck is no, also not qualifying asset. This is just the advance given for the purchase of truck. So we have only one qualifying asset. So the amount which will be capitalized will be like this. Total interest for a time period is 9 lakh into 
out of 50 lakhs of total loan we have only used 20 lakhs for the construction of qualifying asset so 3.6 lakhs 3.6 lakhs will be the interest which will be capitalized along with the cost of construction of shades and the balance interest the balance interest of 9 minus 3.6 of 5.4 lakhs 5.4 lakhs will be directly charged to profit and loss account during the year so remember only in case of qualifying asset a16 says that the borrowing cost should be capitalized let us take one more practical case axe limited began construction of a new plant on 1st april 2008 and obtained a special loan of rupees 4 lakh of rupees 4 lakh to finance the construction of the plant the rate of interest is 10 percent the expenditure that were made on the project of plant were as follows on 1st April 2008, the expenditure is 5 lakh. On 1st August, 12 lakh. And on 1st January 2009, it is 2 lakh. The company's other outstanding non-specific loan, non-specific loan is 23 lakhs at an interest rate of 12%. The construction of the plant completed on 31st March 2009. Calculate the amount of interest to be capitalized as per the provisions of A16 borrowing cost. Now here in this case, on 1st April 2008, the very first amount that was invested for the project of plant is 5 lakhs. So here, most important point is that we can assume FIFO method in this case. See, we have two loans. One is loan of 4 lakh, which is specific loan. And second is a loan of 23 lakh, which is non-specific loan. But we will presume that this is 5 lakh rupees, this is 4 lakh rupees invest because the loan was also bought in 1 4 2008. So, this 5 lakh will be 2 lakh. 1 lakh will be 4 lakh, which is a specific loan, and 1 lakh will be 1 lakh, which we will think is a non-specific loan. Now, we will assume that we will have interest in 10 lakh for the whole year from 1st. 4 2008 to 31st March 2009 so the interest is going to be 40,000 here and in this case is over 12 percent pure sal ka interest lagega so this is going to be 12,000 here so this is the logical breakup of the very first installment which we invested for machine now the second installment is invested on 1st August 2008 so up to specific loan ka paisa pura hi ho chuka hai तो पूरा 12 लाख जो है वो हमें मानना पड़ेगा कि एक नॉन स्पेसिफिक लोन में से ही आया है सो so, इसके ऊपर इसके ऊपर टोटल जो इंटरेस्ट लगेगा वो कितना परसेंट लगना चाहिए अगर हम अगस्त से गिने तो टोटल 8 मंथ्स हुए राइट अप टू मार्च तो इसके ऊपर मैं पूरे साल का अगर 12% कहा तो 8 मंथ्स का 8% करके लिख सकता हूं सो दिस इज गोइंग टू बी 96000 ऑफ इंटरेस्ट नाउ the third installment investment has been incurred for machine on 1-1-2009. Ab ye amount tha 2 lakh. Abhi bhi hamare paas koi specific loan to hai nahi. So is 2 lakh ko non-specific loan mein se hi maanna hoga. And iske upar jo mein interest lagega. That is only for 3 months. January, February, March. So we can take 3% here. So the interest is going to be, the interest is going to be 6,000. So the total interest which we should capitalize along with the plant is 40,000 plus 12,000 plus 96,000 and plus 6,000. So total is 1,54,000. So 1,54,000 ka interest jo hai, wo hume A16 ke hisab se capitalize kar dena hoga. Now let us see the interesting case. What if the range of debt is used at varying rate of interest and such borrowings are not readily identifiable with specific qualifying asset? We have bought 3-4 qualifying asset or started construction and we have loan from 3-4 places and we don't know which loan has gone from which loan has gone from which qualifying asset has gone from which loan 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 has gone from which
कैसे डिसाइड करें कि कितना बोरोइंग कॉस्ट कौन सी एसेट में कैपिटलाइज करना चाहिए सो दिस इज अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग केस हियर लेट अस टेक अ प्रैक्टिकल एग्जांपल फॉर दैट सपोज वी हैव 15 परसेंट डिबेंचर ऑफ रुपीज टू लैख फोर्टीन परसेंट लोन ऑफ रुपीज फाइव लैख एंड टेन परसेंट बैंक लोन ऑफ रुपीज थ्री लैख सो टोटल वी हैव फंड ऑफ रुपीज टेन लैख एंड फ्रॉम विच सोर्स द अमाउंट इज स्पेंड इज नॉट आइडेंटिफाइबल एंड वी हैव परचेज टू क्वालिफाइंग एसेट्स Now what can be done in this scenario? We have used general fund of rupees ten lakh, so we have to find out one capitalization rate. Now capitalization rate is nothing but weighted average cost of all borrowings. So in our given situation, where we have fifteen percent of debenture of rupees two lakh, fourteen percent of loan of rupees five lakh, and ten percent of bank loan of rupees three lakh, we can compute weighted average cost of borrowing like this. Weighted average cost is equal to total interest divided by total debt. Now here the total interest is thirty thousand on debenture, seventy thousand on term loan, and again thirty thousand on bank loan. So the total interest here is one lakh thirty thousand divided by the total fund, which is ten lakh. So my weighted average cost of borrowing or the capitalization rate is thirteen percent here. Now we found out weighted average cost of capital here, but to which amount the weighted average rate is multiplied? The rate is multiplied to the average carrying amount of the asset during a period, including borrowing costs previously capitalized. Now this amount is normal approximation as per A sixty, but expenditure is to be reduced by any progress payment received or any government grant received. Now very important point here is that. the amount of borrowing cost capitalized during a period should not exceed the amount of borrowing cost incurred during that period suppose we have paid the interest of rupees 50000 and we want to capitalize 60000 then this is not possible we can capitalize only up to the extent of 50000 which is the borrowing cost incurred during the period चलिए कैपिटलाइजेशन रेट कैसे लाना है वो तो हम सीख गए लेकिन कब से हम कैपिटलाइजेशन को कमेंस करें कब से शुरू करें एक्सपेंडिचर फॉर द एक्विजिशन कंस्ट्रक्शन और प्रोडक्शन ऑफ अ क्वालिफाइंग एसेट इज बीइंग इनकर्ड बोरोइंग कॉस्ट आर आल्सो बीइंग इनकर्ड एंड एक्टिविटीज दैट आर नेसेसरी टू प्रिपेयर एन एसेट फॉर इट्स इंटेंडेड यूज और सेल आर इन प्रोग्रेस जब ये टाइम पीरियड चल रहा है जब प्रोडक्शन भी हो रहा है बोरोइंग कॉस्ट भी इनकर हो रहा है एंड सभी एक्टिविटीज प्रोग्रेस में है उस टाइम से हमें कैपिटलाइजेशन को कमेंस करना चाहिए नाउ व्हेन कैन द कैपिटलाइजेशन बी सस्पेंडेड कैपिटलाइजेशन ऑफ बोरोइंग कॉस्ट शुड बी सस्पेंडेड ड्यूरिंग एक्सटेंडेड पीरियड इन विच एक्टिव डेवलपमेंट इज इंटरप्टेड मान लो हम एक एसेट का कंस्ट्रक्शन कर रहे हैं जो कि क्वालिफाइंग एसेट है और बीच में हो सकता है कि एक साल तक बिकॉज ऑफ स्ट्राइक बिकॉज ऑफ लैक ऑफ लेबर कंस्ट्रक्शन अगर अटक जाता है तो उस एक साल तक हमें बोरोइंग कॉस्ट को कैपिटलाइज करना बंद कर देना है और उसी बोरोइंग कॉस्ट को उठा के प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस में डेबिट कर देना इफ द सस्पेंशन इज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ अ टेम्पररी डिले इन द एक्टिविटी बिकॉज ऑफ द रिक्वायरमेंट देन द कैपिटलाइजेशन शुड नॉट बी सस्पेंडेड कंस्ट्रक्शन चल ही रहे थे लेकिन हमने वर्कर्स को दस दिन का वेकेशन दिया बिकॉज ऑफ सम फेस्टिवल तो उस फेस्टिवल के दस दिन तक हमें कैपिटलाइजेशन को सस्पेंड करने की जरूरत नहीं है बिकॉज इट मे बी कंसीडर्ड एज द नेसेसरी फॉर द वर्कर्स एंड देयर प्रोडक्टिविटी वेन सब्सटेंशियली ऑल दी एक्टिविटीज नेसेसरी टू प्रिपेयर द क्वालिफाइंग एसेट फॉर इट्स इंटेंडेज यूज और सेल आर कंप्लीट देन ऑल्सो वी कैन सस्पेंड द कैपिटलाइजेशन ऑफ बोरोइंग कॉस्ट Now, when the construction of a qualifying asset is completed in part, and a completed part is capable of being used while construction continues for the other part, then capitalization of borrowing cost in relation to that part should cease when that part is completed. Now, what are the disclosures for A sixteen? The accounting policy adopted for borrowing cost and the amount of borrowing cost capitalized during the period. 